Okay, here we go. We'll see, we're getting started. My watch says nine o'clock, but it might be one minute before. And I'm sure folks will be on shortly and we'll figure it out. And you know, you could put it on on your phone and mute it. So you could tell me if it looks. Good idea. If it's coming up, I see three people it says are on. So I think we're, we're started here. Um, I don't know why it says all that stuff at the bottom, but we'll just wait. Uh, I see eight people. Um, I might have my comments turned off. Where are the comment things? Here we go. Let's check. Comments. No. Comments. Okay, I'm seeing. Could somebody write a comment? I don't, I'm not seeing any comments because sometimes I turn my comment off. Oh, great. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Oh, great. I'm glad to see that folks are here. It's really fun. I was preparing and thinking just how how different this is because I'm used to getting ready and talking to Pastor Jeff and checking in with Sarah. Good morning, everyone. So nice to see your names coming on up. That just really helps uh, to know that we're all here together because this is just so different and so hard and just I want to be with you all in church and so does the rest of the staff as we have our zoom meetings during the week we just just miss everyone so badly and we just want to bring this time to you it's the best uh, best we can do to be together and we're just going to bring God's presence among us between us around us uh, to encourage us so that we can know know that uh, we're all loved and we're all caring about one another and doing the best we can. So thanks for for showing up here this morning. Um, oh, did you listen to Ina Dirks? Oh, beautiful. The blessing and honor. Glory, holy is the Lamb. Oh, it was just lovely. And then Seth and Anna and Matt Warden on the um, This Is My Song. Beautiful music. And then Sarah, thank you for playing Alleluia, sing to Jesus. John and I, for the first time in a long time, got to sit next to each other and sing a hymn together. We don't usually get to do that. So thank you for, for having that. And I hope if you haven't watched that, folks, that you'll go back and watch those posts and sing, sing. It really, it really warms the heart. So uh, good to be with you all. Um, let's see, we usually do announcements. Um, first of all, I'm I'm doing this Facebook Live from home. We're very much sheltering at home. John, um, I think some of you know, is on kidney dialysis, so we're being very safe. Although I will tell you, we did a drive-by wave with my three-year-old grandson, and my daughter had him complete. She's a nurse, so she could get an N95 mask for my little three-year-old grandson. And we stood 20 feet away, and he said, Grandma, we can't give you germs. We don't want you to be sick. And we did an air hug across the yard. And that was our little thing, but we just wanted to see him. And um, I hope all of you are finding little moments like that as we we all cope with this time together and gather together. Uh, we also want to remind you to keep checking your email for touch points for various um Things that will be posted. Miss Kathy had a lovely post um, about being uplifted. Be sure to go and watch that. And Pastor Jeff and Annie had a lovely uh, Monday afternoons at one o'clock. They're doing um, some singing and meditation, which is nice. And we're going to be doing Wednesday nights uh, at six thirty too. Um, you'll see more about that in your email. We're going to be doing some prayer devotion time there, just so folks can have more time at home. And one more thing we've been asked, and I want to first thank everyone for all the gifts and checks you're sending in so that we can keep things going, so that we can keep the church uh, ready and running um, behind the scenes at home while uh, we wait to get back together. Um, so we are going to be putting up a little box, a lock box, so you could bring your church, your gifts up to church. And there'll be some emailed news going out about that. So you can come in the kids' corridor and go down the hall and put it in a little locked box. So look for that in your email uh, if you want more information. 
of that. And last announcement is at, I think it's at 10 o'clock, right? We're doing another Zoom party. And there is a link that uh, if you've wanted to uh, be part of that, um, check for the Zoom link in your email so that you can um, um, zoom in and we can say hi and check in with everybody. And I see Shirley and Chuck and Gretchen and David and Mark and yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for being here this morning. So um, I'm going to do a little bit of um, a litany and some prayers, and um, we're going to talk about the story of Thomas this morning. So let us, let us begin, um, and let us just take a moment to prepare to be in worship. We begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship is written by Roddy Hamilton. We thought you were dead. We thought the cross was the end. We thought that when the stone rolled over the tomb that this was it. But this is it. The dead are living, the cross is empty, the stone is rolled, and the one word that describes it all is Alleluia, Jesus is risen. We thought you said your final word. We thought those with the power had won, and we thought when you cried out, that was it, but this is it. The word breathes, the powers are defeated, the final cry was only the beginning. And one word says it all. Alleluia. Jesus is risen. We thought the story was finished. We thought the hope had ended. We thought that when the tomb was sealed, that was it. But this is it. The story has just begun. The hope is newly born. The tomb is empty. And one word says it all. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. This is the news. Jesus is risen. This is the moment. Jesus is alive. This is the good news. Jesus is with us. We thought that when they crucified you, that death defeated life, that that was it. But this is it. Love is stronger than death, and one word says it all. Alleluia, Jesus is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 16. Here is our psalm. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup, you hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places and I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night, also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, and my body also rests secure. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Now, normally, I'd say, please stand for the gospel, so you're welcome to do that at home. And normally, we'd be singing something like, Alleluia, Alleluia, as we begin 
this uh, time of hearing our gospel. Let me just set the scene for you a little bit. The risen Jesus is appearing to the disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But one of their number is missing, and his request prompts another visit from the Lord. If you remember, last week we celebrated Jesus' new life out of the tomb, and this is in the days following. This is John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I miss singing our responses before and after that. Um, maybe we'll have to try to figure out how to, how to do that so I can remember the notes and all of that. Um, but I just would like to offer a word of prayer this morning. Lord, thank you that we can be together in this holy time. Thank you that in the midst of fears and anxieties, of uncertain uh, times and hopes for the future, that we can gather in your name, that we can know your presence, that we can know that you show up for us and will continue to do that forever and forever. For alleluia, you are risen and you are our Lord. Amen. It was funny, I don't know if you saw this news, did the news thing come on? Uh, my fo- it came on my phone from the New York Times, and I turned those off, but sometimes they just seem to get through, don't they? The news just seems to show up, and we seem to hear all these things no matter, no matter how much we try to tune it out. It just seems to seek us out. But there's one thing I, I found this week that maybe some of you have watched because it's getting a lot of views that I thought was wonderful. It is on YouTube. It is by John Krasinski, and it is called See Good News. John Krasinski was on The Office. His wife is Emily Blunt, who played Mary Poppins. Uh, You might know her. And they have two um, grade school kids, and so they've created this show called See Good News, and it's got the cutest logo, SGN, and it's made in the kids' color crayons. 
And he has got three episodes, one each uh, week lately, and he goes around all over the country to find ways people are sharing good things. And it's called See Good News. For instance, he's got pictures of people making masks, uh, interviewing factories that are turning over their machinery to make hand sanitizer, people that are delivering meals and bringing good cheer. And I don't want to tell you too much, but uh, in one episode, he surprises a little girl who was disappointed and couldn't get to go see her Ham the Hamilton show. It is great. I won't tell you. Go see it. And uh, the most recent one, he does something about baseball. So it's just heartwarming and wonderful and great to see that there's so much good going on in the midst of all of this. The human spirit and God's spirit is strong. I also heard some good news and things that were happening around Mound. Um, I know some of our members are making masks and giving them away. I heard that the St. Bonnie and Minnetrista police uh, brought some birthday t-shirts out and delivered them to folks. And I heard that the seniors are, uh, got signs to put in their driveways so that people can know and acknowledge that they're seniors because this is such a hard time to be a senior and uh, be missing being together in their last year together. Uh, there are a lot of little, little pieces of good news that can warm our heart. And for me, uh, it was yesterday morning or two mornings ago, actually, we have a pond behind our house. And I usually sit out there and look at the ducks, and then all the geese are starting to come, and they're so noisy. But yesterday morning, I looked out. And I don't know if any of you know birds, but there was this white kind of headed bird and it was so unusual. I thought it might be a loon and it came out and it, this whole white side of its head opened up like this. It was a white hooded merganser. It's a kind of a wood duck. Never seen one before. Just, just beautiful. So um, that just made my day. Uh, so all that is to say that let's, uh, Let's remember to see good news, which leads me to our scripture today. And that is when the disciples were looking for good news. But I'm going to rename that a little bit because what they were doing in this story after Jesus passes away on the cross is they were seeking God news. Seeking God news. Because just before our scripture, let me just review what had happened. You see, Jesus, as we all know, dies on the cross on Good Friday. And then on Sunday, Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb and he is not there. And then she goes and gets some disciples and they confirm he's not there. Although one of them kind of gets it. But they're still pretty downcast. And they, those disciples, they go home. They go back to their house and they shut the doors because they're, they're afraid maybe that they're going to have something happen to them. They're, they're still fairly sad. And while that's happening, Mary Magdalene is visited by Jesus. And she sees Jesus. And she says, Rabboni. And he says, peace be with you. And they embrace. And we all know that Jesus is alive. But some of these disciples haven't gotten the news yet. They are shut up, as it says in our scripture, in their house, waiting to see what is next. So, what happens today for our disciples is that it's the first day of the week and the doors are locked. And Jesus comes and stands among them. Some good news. They sought God news and Jesus showed up. He says, peace be with you. The Father has sent me and now I send you. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus shows up in their midst. What a beautiful, beautiful experience 
but there is one who is not there. <laughs> Thomas. And we have all learned and thought about Thomas over the years, haven't we? We call him Doubting Thomas, because Thomas says, well, I wasn't there with you. I want to see him. I want to touch him. Unless I see, I'm not going to believe that he's alive and that he's really Jesus and that he's really God in the flesh. And what happens? But not, but a week later, they were again in the house. Thomas is with them. And Jesus comes and stands among them and says to Thomas, Peace be with you. He lets Thomas touch him. He lets Thomas touch his side. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, it's kind of what we all are looking for right now, isn't it? I mean, Jesus actually offered peace to his disciples not long before he died. Just right after the, the time of the Last Supper and the foot washing, he said the same thing. He said, peace be with you. I will be back in John 14. One of the songs that I keep uh, thinking of and keep running across is the one that starts when peace like a river do 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 it's called it is well and i think it was matt brooks sung it and it's on our facebook page we all just want to feel that deep peace of jesus and jesus offers it to thomas thomas believes that jesus is alive now, it would be easy for us to look at this story and say, ah, Thomas was a doubter, but he saw Jesus in the flesh. But that is not, I believe, what this story is about. This story is not about Thomas' doubts, but it is about Thomas believing and Jesus showing up. This is about Jesus showing up where Thomas needed him. In this story, Jesus meets Thomas where he is at and brings him God news. There are so many ways, friends, that we can know that Jesus is alive and that God is at work in the world. And Jesus himself showed up in many different ways. Think of the wedding at Cana. The folks there believed because they tasted the water he made into wine. Think of all the people he healed, the blind and the ill and the lame. They believed after being healed or they believed while being healed. And think of folks like Augustine. Remember Augustine? He, he, he was sort of the father of the Catholic Church. He wasn't a believer. One day he heard God's voice telling him to pick up the Bible and read. He heard something. It spoke to him, and he believed. Sarah Miles has a book about bread and wine, and in it she tells the story of how she wasn't sure there was a God. She was not sure that church even mattered. And she tasted the bread of communion. And in that bite and in that moment, something came over her and she knew that God was there. And I think of a friend of mine at uh, one of my other congregations who told me after her husband died, she wasn't sure there was a God. But one day she was in church and somebody just came and touched her arm. And all of a sudden she knew through that touch God was with her, that people were there for her. There are many ways that we come to know and realize, friends, that God is around us, within us, and in our world. And Jesus says to Thomas, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have, to come, have yet to come to believe. 
Jesus predicts and tells us that there will be folks that don't see him directly, but they will come to believe. And that is why we tell this story. We tell the story of Thomas over and over again. Our scripture says, These are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus wants to show up in our lives so that we may have life in his name. Today, friends, let us remember the story of believing Thomas and how Jesus showed up. Let us consider how we might seek God news and share that with those around us. Whether it's in seeing a small bird, whether it's in seeing some flowers and crocuses that are arising in, the, in nature, whether it's through the kind words and caring actions of people, whether it's in the music we get to experience from all our wonderful musicians, whether it's in reading scripture or keeping in touch or spending time in prayer and just asking God to be here. Friends, Jesus is here, for he is risen. He is risen indeed. And we are blessed. We are blessed. And may you believe, may you continue to know the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. And may you, in these times, in these days, continue to know Jesus, to connect with one another in his name, and know that you have life in his name. Amen. I hope perhaps that you will share some God news and good news moments with one another on our Zoom call later or with one another at home this week. Let our hearts be warmed by all the goodness in the world in the midst of our times of, of fear and uncertainty. I'd like to say uh, some, uh, I'd like to offer some prayers for us together. And so as, as we pray together, I invite you to just start with finding a calm spot to sit. I know sometimes we watch these things and we're running around and we're getting our coffee and that's just fine. But, but let's just spend some quiet moment um, in prayer. Let's just be seated, please. If you're with your family and you can hold hands, I invite you to do that. If you want to lift up a hand and, and invite the Spirit to be with us as we, as we pray together and ask God's presence to just surround us through the cyber waves, through the airwaves, and through the world so that we can surround one another as I am blessed to be able to read and be the ones uh, uh, with words of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our healer, today please show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally, heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected, and comfort those who have lost loved ones at this time. Lord, in your mercy, and please join me in saying, hear our prayer. O oh God, our protector, grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Heal our self-centeredness and our indifference that allows us to easily ignore our neighbor. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession. Be with caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, and all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Inspire and give insight and hope and wisdom to all the researchers and scientists focusing on developing vaccines and testing. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. Risen living Christ, sustain all workers and business owners who suffer the loss of livelihood due to shutdowns and quarantines and closed borders and other restrictions. Be with those who are furloughed, lost jobs, or have their income reduced. Give them support. Help find ways to calm their fears. Guide the leaders of our nations to speak truth and act with justice so that all your family may know safety, well-being, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Lord, heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Be with those we name now in our hearts, or aloud, or if you want to put a prayer request on the comment on Facebook, we'll take a moment of quiet for a prayer uh, for those specific needs you would like to lift up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers and all that is on our hearts and minds, we give over into your hands of love and steadfast care. Amen. I feel like bursting into song, but please go and listen to some of the music that is on Facebook. Um, let that warm your hearts today. We will see you at 10 o'clock on Zoom. Um, we pray and keep praying all week. We're glad that we can be together. And I invite you to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go in peace. Share the good news. Seek the God's, seek God's news. Smile, laugh, cry, be, be how we are, but let's support and love one another in God's name.